Okay, folks, i um, just like to welcome everyone um, everyone onto the call. Um, it's part two of our Lead Coaching and Games um, Coaching Conference for 2021. Obviously, we had huge numbers online last week for Colin Nally, and we're delighted to welcome um, the well-renowned um, Stephen Rochford, who currently is the coach of Danny Gall, um, the Mayo manager who came up against the might of the dubs for a couple of years, and also very successful club manager in his own right as well. So I'd just like to welcome Stephen onto the call. Hopefully, um, I think we're up on 300 people logged in there at the minute. So if, if anyone has any questions throughout the call tonight, put a wee bit of a mess, a type of message into the chat box um, and we'll, we'll relay the message to Stephen as we go. So I'm just going to hand over to Colin Kelly um, who organised the coaching conference and then he'll pass it on to Stephen when we get started. Thank you. Um, thanks so much, Shane. Yeah, listen, just everyone welcome on tonight. Tonight, uh, probably uh, a special night we'd, we'd top class fella in column last last week who's been you know around these and and he's excellent but in in in, in this guy tonight he's you know his experience is second to none he's when he's been you know down to the line with with the supposedly greatest Dublin team of of, of all time and possibly should have over the line won a couple of all Irelands he's won all Irelands as a player and a manager at club level um you know very very few have done that and you know, this is a rare thing for him to be to be doing these webinars and these coaching conferences. So we're very, very lucky to have him, and um, I'm sure it's going to be a fantastic night. So, so I'll hand over to Stephen. Thanks a million. Um, thanks very much, uh, Shane and Colin. Thanks, uh, th thanks for the invite. Um, as I was saying beforehand, um, <clears throat> the first bit of learning for 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 me tonight was uh, to ask a, a bit more deeper questions when Colin Kelly rings you up to do a. Uh, a bit of a, a coach and speak. I thought I'd be only talking to a couple of couple of coaches from Loud, but um, uh, I got my eyes open there in the last day or two. Um, as I said, thanks very much for for for, for the invite. Um, looking forward to going through uh, a couple of bits over the next forty five minutes or fifty minutes and um, taking a couple of questions afterwards. So, look, I'm not going to. Um, uh, Labour this point, but just some of my own background around, as Colin says, uh, I played uh, my club football with, with, with Cross Line in Mayo. Uh, I was fortunate enough to win an All-Ireland club back in 2001. Uh, and I suppose that group of players that, uh, that I've played with uh, at senior level are, are, are probably the guys that have um, shaped me most as regards my, my outlook on, on, on playing the game, but also the, the values in which uh, I bring to to the game uh, and certainly around honesty and, and, and putting a, a, a positive um, sense to the play in which, uh, in which I like to coach and, and, and I suppose a manner in which I play myself. Uh, and obviously uh, I would have represented Mayo uh, at all levels as a, as a player. Um, should, should put a, a little asterisk to that, that uh, I didn't play senior championship uh, for Mayo, but uh, I got had an old couple of runs out in the, in the National League. Um, coaching wise, um, I did a little bit with, with, with my own club um, back, uh, you know, probably when I was, you know, my mid mid twenties. Uh, I was asked to sort of coach a, an under twenty one team, and that's probably where where, where I developed a, a flavour from it. But um, I was strongly influenced by um, secondary school teachers that, that that I had there, Jerry Leonard. Um, Frank McDonald as regards how to, to, to coach sort of uh, and make things more understandable and learning based um, and, and, and that I suppose sort of gave me a bit of insight around uh, being involved with, with, in, in a coaching sense and then I did uh, a bit with the Mayo Miners back um, in the middle of the, the, the noughties um, and obviously I've been working with Donegal the last two years and managing uh, obviously um, did a bit of time with, with, with Cara Finn um, back now six, seven years ago, uh, and then uh, for three years with, with the Mayo Senior Football Team. Um, so I suppose, you know, tonight's session, I suppose, is, is you know, the tagline uh, is around positive decision making in possession. Um, and I suppose, you know, one, one of the things I said to Colin when, when, when I sort of agreed to, to, that I'd come on and talk is that I didn't want it to, to become a night uh, which We'd be going over sort of X drill to get Y result, or you know that that um, there'd be a sense that um, you know I, I'd much rather assist coaches 
you know, to, to, to understand and, and, and sort of uh, take out what their vision for, for the way in which they wanted their teams to play um, and how you would tra transfer that onto, onto, onto the practice field. And I suppose um, in many ways, there, there, you know, there's no one right way or a wrong way to, 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 to play the game, in my opinion. So the flexibility um, that you want is in your players to be able to make the positive decisions based on what's presented in front of them. Um, and, and, and I think, you know, the more that we arm the players with the ability to be able to make those decisions under pressure, it becomes more difficult for the opposition then to, to, to plan against you and, make, you know, to, to sort of read what, what, what you're doing. So when, when we talk about being in, in, in possession, you know, um, I don't believe that there's any one way uh, doing it. Um, it may be right to, to run the ball at times. It may be right to pass the ball through the lines. It may be right to uh, go long and direct. But what we want to do is we want to arm the players with those skills to be able to make those decisions based off what we practiced um, and then for them to be able to do them under pressure. So um, so what, what do I want to pass on to you then is, right, is, is the a positive, a positive approach to your coaching, right? Um, don't want it to be um, copycat. Um, I, I don't think that there's anything wrong in, in being able to see um, a, a drill that, that, that maybe another coach is doing it. But try to bring your own flavour to it based on the type of players that you have, um, the, 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 the strengths in which you, you, you see your, the, the, that your team have uh, and being able to, to, to do that. And I suppose, um, you know, looking to build the confidence um, into you guys and uh, that you're able to um, deliver uh, a coaching plan or a coaching vision um, or a vision in which you want the guys to play, being able to take that out onto your Tuesday, Thursdays, and uh, and Saturdays. And I suppose over the last decade, right, um, you know, field contact sports have become more uh, possession dominant. You know, we've seen that across rugby, soccer, Gaelic football, uh, hockey, um, all those. Um, uh, it's all about possession, and, and in some ways. Possession now is, is, is the number one way in relation to, 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 to your defence. You're obviously on the ball and you're not asking as many questions um, or you're able to ask more questions of the opposition. You're not being, putting your own defence under pressure. So what I want to do just to kick off um, tonight is um, I want to uh, play a little video. I think, Shane, you can play a little video there. It's just three minutes, guys. I'm not going to, to talk to it. Um, just yet, well, we'll do that in a few minutes, but I just want uh, people to just watch this video. It's just a couple of clips, as I said, three minutes of a couple of games that I've been involved in, a couple of games that I've sort of watched, um, and it sort of leads into to, to, to what I, we're, we're going to talk about over the next uh, 40 minutes or so.
Um, so, okay, so, um, so basically, guys, um, for, for, for me, um, and this might sound a, a little bit boring, but, um, and, and, you know, when you're in possession, uh, the things that, that um, the simplicity of doing the basics really, really well um, is what makes uh, that, what we saw there in, 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 in those couple of clips, makes it sort of, um, you know, so attractive or, or makes it so, so um, you know, worthwhile uh, is, is the attention to the, to, to the skills. Um, and in these two teams, I suppose, you know, just on a, on a global and on different sports, right? Even though they had, you know, obviously international uh, quality players, world-class players, right? Um, the things that, that, that they did really well um, is the basics, right? And I think, you know, uh, Colin would have, would have alluded to it, obviously, in, in, in Dublin and how they're dominating uh, senior football. And their ability on the basics, right, is second to none, right? So what, what I'm going to ask is that we play that video once more, but now I want you to look at it not as, as a spectator or somebody sitting just in front of it, now look at it with your coach and I, and what are you actually seeing in front of you, right? When we talk about the basic skills and look at the simplicity of being able to do it. And we, we'll, we'll talk about being able to do it under pressure in, 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 in a short while, but just start to look at what are the couple of basic things that are in this that you can start to say, you can start bringing to, uh, to a practice session. Okay, um, so just to say on that, guys, the, the, um, those couple of clips um, I pulled together when I was talking to um, a, a club team 
uh, uh, last year uh, before we get into a COVID world. Um, but I just thought it, the, that it was relevant to, to um, obviously the topic that we're going to look at tonight. So when we um, when you're looking at uh, at that those clips, I suppose you know my own um, view on being able to uh, make those positive decisions um, when, when when you're in possession um, comes down to uh, a couple of basic key skills, right? Um, and the first one, um, and it's one that 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 um, Shane and 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 uh, his colleagues in relation to the, the games promotion uh, officers would be promoting day in day out around hand pass, uh, both left and right. But that's you know open hand, but also by by closed fist, um, and the ability to be able to do that, you know, um, it's probably a an underrated skill. It's it's. It's not as sexy or as flashy as as, as maybe the foot pass that we talk about in a minute. Um, it it doesn't always uh, garner the headlines of you know um, you know a big tackle or great fielding or that. But you know it's it's the ability to be able to do that under pressure uh, can make the difference in relation to uh, unlocking a defence uh, and and creating. Um, not just scoring chances, but but, but goal scoring uh, chances as well. Um, foot pass, all right. Um, and as I said at the start, there's no right or wrong way to play. Everybody, every coach, every manager has to cut their cloth. Um, but for me, again, the foot pass um, element just brings the options in relation to the, the a team to be able to move from, from defence to attack um, so much quicker, all right? I mean, that's that's probably an obvious thing for people to say, but um, if you were to look at it even from um, your, your your maximum uh, GA size pitch, um, you you look at the the, the D, right, uh, in your defence, and that's that's typically the goal scoring or the scoring area for, for the opposition. Um, and that's where, where you know, you can you'll turn over the ball possibly most um, in that area in the middle third, but just taking that area, and within two thirty meter foot passes, right? And um, obviously, as the as the crow flies, but you can be below at the D in the opposition's end, and a thirty meter range. The next time we get to pitches, if you look at what thirty meters is, it's actually a small distance, right? And for me, also, everybody. Can be brilliant at 30 meter foot pass. Everybody from the poor old cornerback that you're screaming for the midfielder to take the ball off, or one of your good attacking wing backs, right up to the corner forward, guys coming off the bench, whatever it is. Everybody can be proficient and brilliant, actually, to the point at 30 meter. Yes, there's a first part of it of getting the technical element right with, with, with everybody, um, and then putting the, the 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 other elements into the practice around. Um, the game-based games, or sorry, game-based skill-based games, um, your small-sided games, but having this as a key feature, um, and 30 meter range for me typically comes into uh, a one bounce pass, and you would have seen that probably uh, in a number of the the, the clips that we show on there. Um, that that ability allows the attacker to win the ball away from the defender, allows them to attack through the ball winning it um, and that's where the touch will come into it. I'll touch on that um, uh, in, in one moment. The other thing I'll just say about the foot pass and, and people may say, um, ah, look, you the Curra Finn, they were, you know, they're very good at foot pass and everything. Not everybody was, not everybody was. Um, and um, in other teams that that, that that I've been involved in, right, um, it's just been, it's been a case there that, um, you know, you keep it on, you got to keep it on the radar and you got to keep it into every session. And in that, those couple of clips that we were shown in the video, the guys that were probably, in um, purpose of put it, guys that would have been maybe that, that you wouldn't uh, automatically think of being the guys that, that were good foot passers and that, they were the ones that were unlocking defences there with that 30 metre one hop pass into space, allowing his, 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 his teammate to run onto it, win it, and being able to make decisions and, and, and that off it. So, um, your foot pass, 30 meter range, one hop, preferably, but 
Um, again, guys can win that on their chest, obviously, under the new mark rule. Um, and finally, what I would say as well, when you look at the foot pass element, the guys that are able to kick it at 40 metres and they're able to do it the outside of the foot, and the, that's all brilliant. And that'll be just another addition um, to, 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 to what your team can bring to the bring to the game. Um, but as a, I suppose, as a, as a feature for your team, um, been really pushing that that everybody gets gets up to a really high standard on your foot pass thirty meter range. Um, I think can really bring on your 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 team um, uh, in spades. The last one I would say then in relation to a basic skill um, is around your touch, and this definitely is probably the most unappreciated uh, aspect um, of 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 Gaelic games, right? Um, and this is where players can can win the inches, the, the half a second, the second to um, get away from their man, be able to, to to win the ball going away from, well, it looks like going away from goal, but winning it on the turn um, and, and, and taking it before the defender knows. And there's a, what I would be recommending is that, that, that you try to get your, your players used to uh, winning the ball off their body right um, and if you can if you can make a vision of this sort of winning the ball a full arm's length away from 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 the body and that that allows you two things one is the defender that's right up behind you trying to put pressure on to, to, to block it away it now becomes a very difficult task for him to be able to win it unlike if you're trying to just win it on your chest or on your body they can still get a hand in to make it messy they can get close to you they can let the ball run by but if you can get comfortable and it won't be in every situation obviously weather conditions or in the last moments of a game you just want somebody to win that ball but you know by and large if you can have guys in your team, and that's not just your full forward line players, it's your half forwards, your midfielders, your half backs, your full back line, being able to win the ball off their body, getting their touch in, um, it's, 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 it's an, an absolutely uh, invaluable skill to, to have. And the second thing in relation to being able to win the ball off your body is, again, being able to look at the options and where the next pass needs to go to. So if you're winning the ball off your body, you already have it in your fingers to give it to an, uh, um, a, a runner, drop it to your foot if you need to take a play or, 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 or to kick pass it on. Whereby if it's in on your body, defender can get in tight with you, can slow it up, can, can get his arms wrapped around you just before the referee blows for a foul and it just slows up the attack. And you know, you'll have, you'll, you'll have many thoughts and, uh, and you can probably visualize loads of those situations whereby a good attack forward has, has won it under pressure, but he's won it close to his body. The defender gets in tight and strong about him, and the attack then gets slowed up, and it gets ends up in the ball being recycled. Or if you can win that ball off your body, you can use a runner, you can dummy to the runner, you can take the play on yourself. So, a um, couple of couple, couple of um, ones to take into 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 your thought process in relation to the sessions in which you're going to run. Just also in relation to what we saw in the video there. Around, what were the other features that you that, that you saw there? Um, forward passes, right? Uh, I think we had only two examples in which a pass was 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 pushed back. One went to a goalkeeper on a recital, right? And um, passes, yeah, yeah, that, that that maybe went sideways, but they were always to a man that was going breaking the line and was making the next uh, play forward. So forward passes, right? Getting those into, uh, uh, I suppose, as a as a as a feature in your in your play when you when you turn the ball over you're looking to get uh, uh, forward passes in, in in quite quickly and I think if even you know um, the high press that the teams uh, are push on from time to time uh, the thing that stresses those most is where you can get a forward pass and that 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 that, that takes uh, a number of the defenders out and also teams that are looking to put back numbers. You can get one or two forward passes in quickly, maybe one opened with a 30 meter foot pass. Again, that it gets you the ball into an area in which that, that, that doesn't allow them to get their, their numbers back. Um, the support play and the movement features that were in that as well, all right? They become sort of more uh, natural, right? And the cohesion in the play becomes more natural once you have the basics of your hand pass, your foot pass, your touch, right? And, and the forward pass as a, as a feature in the play, 
the more that you have that coach and you put it into your small sided games and you put it into your skill based games, your condition games, those natural support lines that guys run, they start to feature. You don't have to be telling player A to move to point one or two or anything like that. It, it, it doesn't become there. And the more natural that that that, that you can, can have that, it allows the players to be able to make those decisions uh, more freely and, 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 it, and it doesn't become more PlayStation like. Um, so I would, if, if there was one thing that, that, that I'd ask you to take from tonight's session, it's those basic key skills, hand pass, left and right, foot pass, operating over 30 meter range and the touch and the touch being able to win it off your body and and, and that will also you can see in a, in a few moments and um, your ability to be able to, to to win that on the turn okay so obviously coaching techniques and everybody here will be uh, absolutely uh, familiar with you know looking at technical side um of of the coaching all right the closed drills the uncontested uh, aspects and and really, my so it's from when I started out coaching, uh, probably the, the the sessions were dominated by the technical aspect. All right, maybe you know three quarters of the session was based on on on, on drills, and that is certainly certainly um, across all teams and, and across all sports, uh, much more based into uh, into the game side of it within the coaching, but. There's still, there is still a part for, for, as I see it, in the technical side. Again, this is just my opinion, um, but it helps with people's and, and the players' understanding of what's expected. What does it look like? Um, and you may not have a, a technical part in every one of your your, your sessions, but un, until people get familiar um, and, and comfortable with what you want to see, um, I would have it in there. And again, it may only be. A 10 or 12 15 minute at most aspect uh to to, to the drill and and um uh, or to the skill and in that you can start to add in bits that actually a part of of the drill becomes contested all right so so in that so what i'm going to do at this stage is i'm just going to um to show um uh, two drills that uh, that are put together in relation to the technical aspect, just to give you a, a flavour of what it can it can look like. So, bear with me. I'm trying. That out. These ones are just two uh, um, uh, technical drills that, that you can run, right? Um, which which with your guys. Um, and what I would also say on it is that these are two quite aerobic drills, um, and. You know they can be used as as part of your 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 fitness blocks uh, as well, and instead of maybe doing laps or whatever. And it's very game specific. So what you have here is you've got cones um, at about a 35 meter uh, distance. So you've got a cone uh, inside maybe your 14 meter line. You've got one maybe at your 45 meter meter line or so, and then one back at the the middle of the field. And you can use this again for um, six or eight players. Okay, so if you have eight players, you'll start three at either end, all right? Um, and then you always just start with two in the middle. Um, so there's two balls, um, uh, start one at either end. So if you want to tab down, Shane. Okay, so you're gonna pass the ball from A to F. So when you see F there, all right, on that side of the cone, they're actually going to take the ball on the opposite side of that cone. So, so you're looking at their movement moving from right to left, right? Um, and then the, you'll see similarly, um, C will take the ball from D, again, moving to the other side of it. So you're getting used to taking the ball, right? On the move, winning this ball. And if you get it into a stage where you can be working off their skill on the mark, where they win the ball cleanly on their chest, or if they're winning it with a, with a hop, they're winning the ball, taking it on the turn, looking down the the, the 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 far end and they're kicking the ball down the far end so if you want to tab down again shane so you see there get the ball they win the ball on on, on in, in that space and again shane they moved in the ball down to the far end all right so you can tab again shane move it down and then they'll follow on if you tab again and they follow in and then the two got the two players that started the drill at, um, a, at A and D at the two ends, they then become the two players in the middle uh, again, all right? Um, and again, they then receive the ball from the next guys 
again D win it on the opposite side, A win it on the on, on the opposite side. And they so where A started from, he's only going to work from the cone in which he was at to the middle cone and back then to that side. And the same again for the guys at the uh, at the other end in D, E, and F. They only work from the cone in which they start to the middle cone. They just work that side of the grid. Okay, so hopefully people can can, can understand that. And again, you know, you want to work on on you see 80 percent of that is something that you can use look to put your own flavor to this thing with 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 something you can put a the, the ball going out can be a uh, or the ball coming back in should i say can be a ball maybe in the air if you're working on on guys ability to to win the ball over their head um you know you, you can start to mix these up as you, as you so wish so if you want to move on to the next one then shane again just to give you a flavor again around bringing this as a vision again, how, how you see the ball maybe moving within um, the attack half of the field. So the ball starts with A, which is about 55 meters from, from, from the goal, right? Um, B and C sort of, uh, A, B and C sort of are basically in a, in, in, in a V shape, right? The ball starts with A. And what A is trying to do when they pass the ball to B is they're trying to work on B's touch. So you can have A, he can be fizzing that ball with maybe a hop in the ground where, he, where, where B has to come and attack the ball. Again, getting that, getting used to the ball off his body, all right? He'd slip a pass back to, to, to A. C runs off as a support player, plays that ball into D, and B had, will have carried on his, his run to take the shot. So, Shane, if you wanted to start tabbing down, so A to B, then, so he's won the ball with his touch. B back to A, off to C. C will play the ball in by foot, that 30 meter, one hop pass, B coming off him, shot over the bar. And then how that rotates is it rotates um, uh, clockwise, all right? So B will go inside and then A becomes the next guy on his touch. C who will have kicked the ball, will, will have been passing it to, to, to A. And then the guy that was on the, on the inside gets out to D. And again, what I was saying to you is there is you can start to work on that in loads of different forms. So that can be that pass coming uh, from the foot pass. You can start doing it as a diagonal. You can start doing it in, in a high diagonal. Again, you can start to mix that up in whatever way you, you, you so wish. So they're just a couple of they're, they're just two drills to get you working on the technical aspect. And again, if guys are doing that over a, a three, four minute period, you know, four, four guys to a group, they, 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 they get a good uh, good blow off. Well, you can actually probably bring that up to about eight guys per, per, per group and Perfect. still get a good blow. Okay. So, um, obviously then, you know, your, spill, your skill based games, right? Um, and then again, that's just sort of bringing those, those three basic uh, key skills into a game setting, right? Um, again, it could be something as sim simple as you know, you're just looking at, or just those, take those three skills that we that, that, that we'd spoken about. So um, you reward the team with a score once they get four four uh, foot passes in a row with one hop or straight to to um, consecutive scores. Should I say um, when when they when they get that? But that's not to say that in in between they can't have a hand pass if that's the right decision. But it's only when they get four maybe foot passes uh, in. That, that you give them a score and, and just be you know you, you'll have all your own simple um skill based games that that you can bring to the to, to 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 the to the to the sessions and i suppose the thing here is just to to you try and base them around um you know the size of the grids that, that that's appropriate for 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 your numbers um, and obviously uh, lengthen those out and um, making them smaller based on on, on, on your numbers in that. Obviously small sided games again gradual progression all right again with smaller numbers than your 15 v 15 and again I'm going to give you just some some, some ideas around around what that might look like and um, condition games um, again you know very familiar with for, for a lot of people uh, and then you're moving into your full game uh, and those are in two scenarios so uh, your phases of play um, how how you suppose will, will react from from a turnover you created a turnover uh, back in your own half back line full back line whatever it is you know how do you how do you play away from from, from those and what are the 
the key features to, uh, to, to have into it. So, so going out to plan your session, there's a, there's a lot there in which you can, can, can look to build it up. And this is only about stuff obviously that's in possession. You'll have your other, your other areas in relation to tackle and, you know, kick outs and all the other different aspects that are in it. So Shane, if you can come down to the next, next slide. Yeah. So, um, as I was saying there around the skill based, uh, games, um, one that I've used in the past is around um, uh, pitch 60 by 30, again, 6 by 6 v 6, right? Um, and, and some of the simple rules in it is that the, the, the kick pass can have no more than one hop, right, uh, in it. Um, your hand pass must go to, 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 to hand, okay? Um, no solo or, or, or hop, no, no, no plays um, allowed. And again, creating your, your score with four consecutive kick passes only. Now, again, not alone is that um, uh, just a skill-based game, but that's a very basic game. And for 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 me, um, it's simple. People get an understanding um, about what it is that you want to see when we get into the game's situation. Um, and also, it allows them to get familiar with, with, with how the skills work, whilst fatiguing, whilst being put under pressure. Um, and, you know, one thing that I can guarantee you in relation to this is that if, if, if you go and you start to implement this, you will have loads of frustration in it. You'll be frustrated yourself, but the players will, you know, at the start become, you know, uh, particularly frustrated. They'll be given out, given out to each other, given out to you, um, but that's okay. You know, two, three weeks, guys start to understand what, what it is that, that, that you're looking for and you can definitely look to, 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 to see the, the, game, the skill in the game uh, starting to improve and it, it will automatically automatically get guys attacking the ball when they only know that there's only one hop in it attacking the hand pass not waiting for when the note must go to hand right the the support play and effort will be upped automatically when they realize and they understand that the teammate doesn't have the option of taking a solo or hop. So there's no hiding place in any of these. So Shane, if we move down to small sided game. So um, in the small sided game, what, what, what I've just tried to, to, to do here is just try and give you, uh, again, a bit of a sense around um, how we can uh, take, you know, phase the play really uh, out onto the, onto the field. So. What I've tried to, to uh, show and illustrate here is um, 100 meters by, by, by 40, so um, maybe about half half the width of your field, right? And 100 meters being from 21 to, to, to 21. And you'll just create two scoring um, rectangles there. Again, um, you could take it in line with the, the top of the D and, and, and make it as, as wide as maybe 10 or 15 meters. Again, you know, you, you, you can work on, on that being quite big at the start and, and starting to bring it in um, uh, to, to, little, uh, to a smaller size uh, as your season progresses. And again, what you're looking at there is maybe a 9v9. Again, this will be quite aerobic, all right? Um, uh, kick pass, again, one hop, hand pass must go to hand. You limit or exclude the solos. Now you're into a much bigger area. So you may look to bring in, um, allow them maybe an option of one, one play, or exclude it totally in in your defensive half or exclude it in the middle third again you know depending on what you're trying to bring to the game what you see um, an area that you need to improve on you can look to to to, to mix that you may totally exclude it um from from as a, as an option for them um but then how do you go and you score is that no player no attack player uh, or defense player is allowed into the yellow box before the ball is about to be kicked. Now, I'm not, he can be in there a second or two before the ball is kicked, but he can't be standing, or she can't be standing inside the box when the ball is out in the middle of the field. Don't want that. What I'm looking for is guys moving, tacking into that box, winning the ball cleanly, all right? So the pass into the orange, uh, that should be rectangle, not a square, is again with one hop or to the chest with a mark, and that's a one point score, all right? Um, you can you can start with with that and then progress it too, right? When that player wins, if a supporting player of his takes a pass from him, again it has to be to hand, right? 
they can take a shot at the main match post and if he gets a score that's two points okay so you're playing your game you start off maybe for the first five or six minutes whereby uh, the player must win the ball getting into the box wins it cleanly by a hop or to the chest and then you can progress that to him winning the ball or her winning the ball in that area and then a teammate has to be coming in support so just visualize that it's your full forward in a game wins it with his back to goal who's getting up there in support to take the ball takes it and then they take the shot again with with the same rules whether they're allowed one play or not they're shooting on the main uh, into the main goals and that area alone what it allows you to start to perfect your your shooting and your movement and angle runs okay so hopefully uh, i've explained that well enough in relation to, to to how you can move that okay so shane if you move it on to the next next slide so again uh conditioned games okay um again i've uh, I look to open this up a, a bit more 120 meters by, by by 60 again you know your pitch dimensions can all be dictated by at what stage of the season your, your guys are at the fitness levels that they're at there's a lot of work and studies being done by by a lot of guys in the phds and and and, and guys in strength and condition in relation to the the optimum size of pitches so there's some really good stuff uh, out there that, that you can to tie into um, again, what I've looked at here now is maybe 10 v 10. You can include your goalies. And sorry, I should say on the previous game, you can also include your goalies on the previous game. Not that they would be in the box, but the restarts can come from them maybe uh, and, and working on short kickouts, short kickouts into space and just on the resets. Okay, so so um, you're looking at again 10 by 10. Again, you're looking at. Uh, kick pass, one hop, um, or, or chest, hand pass, must go to hand. Um, limit again, exclude your solo or your hop option, again, maybe in certain areas of the field. And maybe in this one, what you can look to do is that you can't have any pass back in your own half. So anyone that's familiar maybe with sevens, sevens football, uh, a rule there is you can't pass the ball back in your own half. You might allow that um, a guy coming off the shoulder, the pass can be slightly, slightly back as long as he's absolutely breaking the line, coming in support. But typically, you're not looking for what you're looking to get out of, uh, out of the, out as a feature or behaviour in them is guys taking the ball standing. Uh, and and typically, what happens is that when when a pass gets handed back, it it, it goes to to a guy in a standing position. So again, um, that type of condition game, all of those. Those games that I've that I've given you will also provide your your your, your players with a good fitness uh, aerobic hit and, and done so in a in a match situation or match match type scenarios. So um, again, you know there, you know what what I'd like guys to be taken and the people to coach to be taken from tonight is saying, yeah, actually I. I I like what you're saying there, Stephen. Um, eighty percent of that, or eighty-five, but maybe when we get into a certain area of the field, we we we've got a guy at six foot four that plays the edge of the square. We're going to work on, you know, one side of the field. It's going to be a diagonal ball in, and that's absolutely fine. Um, again, what you're looking for is people to um, put their own shape uh, on 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 any of these sessions. These are just some ideas to get you to sort of, I suppose, get you get you started with. Okay. Um, and then finally, Shane, move on to the last slide. Again, um, your full size games, again, um, 15 v 15, incorporating the skills focus. So what I'm saying there is just because you're you're on, on a Sunday morning session or that and you're, you're playing a 15 v 15 game, don't lose what you've been trying to coach uh, as regards the behaviors in the skill focus. Um, you know, penalize when, the, when, when, it, when it's a sloppy hand pass or kick pass. Uh, uh, a pass maybe into the corner uh, that goes for a second hop. You know, it's it's it you might as well have given it to, to ask your your uh, corner forward to go and win that ball in the corner. Like I mean, it's it's when we're, when we're trying to strive for 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 excellence. Um, you know, we 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 got to be sort of I suppose ruthless in relation to how you yeah or incorporate the skills focus into your 15 to 15 games and not just into the small sided games um, and condition games. And again, all of this can be done 
um, whilst working on uh, your game scenarios and your phases of play again, uh, as I said there, how do you work off maybe uh, a, a turnover, a, a ball that drops short maybe into your goalie's hands again, you know, how do you move the ball quickly, what are the well, again, what are the things that, that, that you're looking for, if you can get that first kick pass away at some stage you know, reasonably early in your, in your movement how many of the opposition's defenders does that take out of it and trying to get people to understand that Bring it into your 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 phases of play, and 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 guys, the, the penny can, can can really drop with them. So there are a couple of of, of ideas, a couple of the I suppose the principles that that I've worked on since since I, I probably went to Curra Finn and, and certainly with Mayo and and, and Donegal. Um, and again, what, what I hope is that people just get a flavour of, of of ideas that they can sort of bring back. Um, and certainly not to, to, to copycat, and I certainly don't have all the answers. A lot of the stuff in which I shared with you guys tonight is stuff that I learned off Dave Morris and Kevin O'Brien and Cara Finn and Donny Buckley, Tony McEntee and Mayo and Carol Lacey and Gary Boyle and Donegal. So um, there's a there's an element of of, of, of me to taking ideas from them in which we've, we've looked to, to put them in here. So nobody's got all the, the, the right answers, but you may get some bits from what we've gone through there over the last 45 minutes that, that, that gives you an idea of what what you can bring into your sessions. That all right, Shane? Yeah, perfect, Stephen. Um, just I, I'm just going to have a chat. Look here in the text box if anyone has any questions. Um, feel free to put them into the text box there. Um, Stephen, excellent presentation. I hope. Um, I hope everyone that logged in, I think we're, we're up around 370 at one stage logged in, so huge numbers um, and obviously apologies about any technical glitches and um, it's, it's a long way from Mayo to, to send it <laughs> to get stuff to transfer over. Um, but excellent stuff tonight, uh, Stephen. If anyone has any questions, I know last week um, there was plenty of questions coming in for Colm. If anyone has any questions there for Stephen, we'll, we'll hang on and ask any questions we have. Um, Colin, you any questions or Carol or Craig in the background there? Yeah, no, it's it's. Uh, I I I thought it was very good, Stephen. It was excellent stuff, and um, it 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 just brings home that you know the simplicity of of how the game is played, and there's no magic concepts out there, even in the drills and the demonstrations. Um, you know, as I said, you had some some of the clips you showed were fantastic football, and yeah, it's all simple, um, limited touches, just ball played into a different area. So, you know, it incorporates a lot of the skills that we try to. Try try to bring to bring with us every day into into game situations and some of your standard to to you know just reinforce the, the the issue that it is a simple game. I think it's 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 brilliant to to express that view to to the people listening in and it's it's you know it's just it's great to hear it coming from someone who's 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 done at the highest level. Yeah, and I think I think you know that's the key element. I think that the the thing that sort of brings fondness or no that's not even the right term but what makes people appreciate the eye is the simplicity in, in, in which we do it and that sometimes maybe coaches look to to talk up that that this, this is a bit more complex or that th if this can't be done or that can't be done I I, I certainly believe you know in, in relation to the to the um those basic skills in that uh, everybody within the, the team can 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 become um, really proficient on, on on those skills, and I think that's what you know. As coaches, that's the ambition in which we should be setting for for, for, for ourselves, um, and then I suppose an expectation of, of of players that we get that they get to that level as well. Um, yes, and um, just a couple of questions come in there. Is there any examples of how you would encourage players to play with their head up instead of putting their head down as soon as they get on the ball? Yeah, again, it's probably in your conditioned games. Uh, items there that that uh, you, you look for get them to, I suppose firstly is that you want to get them again that technical aspect they want to get them comfortable about being able to move the ball without having to maybe set themselves and um, sometimes players will look to take that the, there, there's two reasons one guy is uh, is trying to, to, to show off to everybody that he can hop or solo the ball and somebody else just needs that, that, that extra yard or two to, 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 to become comfortable on it so I think your technical your technical drills um, should provide them with with, with the comfort, um, and then you putting in the conditions, uh, providing them with the conditions around you know 
certain areas of the field they can't they can't take a, a play they can't play with a, a, a hop or a solo um or that again that that, that uh, item in relation to maybe no passes back in, in your own half um or no plays maybe in your own half but you can you can, you can take a play in, in in your attack half of the field but again looking to you know i suppose the question i'd probably push back to, to the coaches you know what do you feel is, is what's holding up holding back your player in relation to playing with their head up is it because they just don't see what's happening in front of them um or are they just somebody that just likes to be on the ball themselves um and in that you know then it then it's probably conditions that you need to implement or it's to get them comfortable around what the the skill is but again you know when I bring back and you know it might sound a little bit simplistic or a little bit broken record I think every player uh, again we need to, to, to just push them certainly in relation to play, playing with by foot that 30 meter that 30 meter range yeah powerful Stephen and um, just another one coming in there and um, when you're practicing your 30 meter kick pass do you find it more beneficial to try it in small side of game activities or in full side side of games uh, in both um, I would be, you know, would be encouraging it throughout um, your small sided games, your skill based games, your condition games, and and and, and your full size games. Again, you know, your different, it's, but your your skill based games are to are to provide a different environment for for working on the skill, but with more uh, context or a bit more under pressure to be able to to deal with it. Um, and then going into going into the games again you know if you're going into your full side of games or whatever uh looking to penalize when when, when the skill isn't is, isn't carried out to, to, to the way it is and if you if you can imagine it when you see a pass going you know eight out of ten times when, when that pass hits the ground the second time the pace has usually gone away from your attack it's gone out towards the wing it's going towards the the end line um, and that's not what we want to be encouraging the, the team to do. So uh, I'd be quite strict in relation to 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 honing those skills, no matter whether it's small sided games or into your full sided full sided games. And um, just one there, um, Stephen. On any advice on how to encourage lateral support play runs? What's the first thing you would teach? And just even on that one there, another question, any suggestions how to improve players' awareness, visual awareness around the pitch? Yeah, well, again, the, the visual awareness side first um, will, will typically come from, again, your, your, your games. I think the more games in which you, you, you can start to bring to, 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 to the session, um, that, that certainly is, is going to provide um, I suppose an avenue in which guys can 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 get better get better and more familiar with um in relation to to to, to lateral support and that um again you 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 know i think i think um what, what has become a, a big feature in, in in relation to um I, I suppose attack options and that um it's probably stuff off of angle drums right um, and being able to certainly move uh, teams with, with 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 blanket defenses in place uh teams that can provide uh, some angle running um allows you to be able to shift those those um defensive uh options out of the way so lateral support i, th I think you're probably looking at uh, as sort of no plays and um, means that guys need to get up and support support the, the 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 guy on the ball i think you know one thing that i try to, to to remind players of is when 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 a player gets the ball he really only has three things he can do with it he can either take try to take on his man himself he can look to pass the ball forward or else he needs support coming uh, and at least coming off his shoulder so again how you can sort of encourage um if, if it's lateral support uh, it's supporting after full forward line or if it's coming out from defence, again, possibly putting in conditions and some parameters around um, where you want that support to come from and in what areas of the field uh, should encourage that. Again, the conditions typically 
um, support those best behaviors. And again, it won't, it, you won't see it happening in the first night and you may not even see it happen in the first month, but stick with it. Yeah, just another one there. Can you give um, more detail on phases of play? And also, um, movement is often harder to coach than the kick pass. Um, is there any ideas you have around that? There's probably two questions in there. Yeah, so 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 the movement, right? I suppose um, you can you can start to, to work off on the technical aspect around people to understand what's what's movement about. So um, you know. In, 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 and, and you're dead right, movement um, when, when, it's, when it's done properly is probably when it's, when it's natural, right? Um, but if you can get the foundation in on your skills, right? And then pushing that into a situation whereby it's your condition games, um, you know, your, your, I suppose, the dimensions of your pitch can be important in relation to that as well, not making the, the, the pitch uh, too wide, um, but making it wide enough that, that 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 a guy needs to be able to to move off his man. Uh, a coach uh, would have said to me before around players getting the concept of doing V and L cuts. So if you can think about an L shape that they, you, you 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 move forward or you move back and then you move left or right depending on which way you want to go. V cuts going up and back and all of those and trying to trying to get those concepts into into players' heads. In a technical aspect first where, where they're uncontested and they get onto it and then certainly bringing it into um the the the, the situation of of the conditioned the conditioned and the small sided small sided games and there's so much to be got from 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 providing the 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 the, the, the conditions into it when, when players understand that the ball can only hop once right they'll go and attack the ball and whilst that doesn't necessarily go to the point in which the, the question is going around the movement. Once guys start to understand that there's a ball, and that next pass has only got one hop, their their willingness to move for it will create space for other guys to do it. And movement is certainly it's probably one of the harder things to to get into, into your team. And it will take uh, months of practice to get it in. But Sticking to your sticking to to your 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 skill uh, execution will bring a natural movement element to it, and and also a cohesion. Just Shane, in relation to the phases of play, so your phases of play typically work off, um, you know, uh, you know, when when do you turn over the ball, maybe from the opposition, all right? So so, um, I suppose looking at the topic of which we're looking at tonight in relation to attack, what what provides you with an attack option, so it's a restart, right? So it can be from the sideline, uh, free kick, kick out, um, a turnover, uh, a ball that's dropped short, right? So what you're looking at there is that that if you've got your your uh, your 15 v 15 in, in, in a, your, one of your coach night and your phase of play might be for loud coming forward and they've dropped the ball short um, into the goalie's hands and may or playing away all right and that becomes then what's that phase of play look like so when we turn over the ball from 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 the opposition drops short what are we looking at where do we want to go with the, the with the first two or three passes how quickly can we get it to the middle third and um, likewise if we turn the ball over um maybe in the d uh, good tackle there or somebody's intercepted a pass or broken up a pass again what does that phase of play look like to be able to, to play that away. And again, as you get more comfortable with with how those look, you can always start to sort of what I call Lego brick bits on. So you have a phase of play there, as I said, you've turned the ball over uh, in, in your D, you complete your attack at the far end, and then you can set up a phase of play that you defend the next kick out, and then you go and you repeat that again. So again, you've got now two elements of maybe your game uh, into your session. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, just um, Stephen, just uh, there's a question in here just about um, if would your players or you as a coach have special cues for players to incorporate the long kick pass in for both the kicker and the receiver? Um, yeah, like I mean, there, 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 there can be cues in, there can be you know signals, there can be um, off certain 
you know, phases in the game, you know, maybe off certain restarts, maybe off uh, injuries, maybe off, um, uh, you know, there, there's, there's so many different um, uh, junctures or, or different points um, that, that, that provide for, for, for a kick out and um, that, yeah, there, 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 there typically can be. But again, um, it's, it's, it's when you've got and you've practiced um, the elements that, that player A and player B, you know, they, can, they, they have a sort of telepathy to be able to read what the, the scenario is on. Um, but that's the one that, 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 that provides you with, with the best option to be able to make here because when, when the opposition can't read what, what, what you're doing, that's when you're at your most dangerous. So yes, you will you will have certain calls, but it doesn't mean that you have you can you can't use that kick out or that that um, play uh, unless that call is made. Right? Again, once you've practiced and you 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 you, you know what the opportunity, the scenario that's presenting itself, the, the telepathy between not just the two players that are completing the skill, but the others then to go support, pick up the break and ball, whatever it is. And um, that's when you can become your most dangerous. And um, just go even on from your kick out there, Stephen. Uh, on winning the kick out, your teams have a number of set patterns of play, or is it more off the cuff stuff of play as you see? Um, probably a bit of both. Um, you, you you want the players to be able to play as they see. Uh, um, you, you again, um, it's not. It shouldn't be about um, a a situation that. That guys um, go, go through a, a system play, um, certainly not off, uh, off a kick out because um, it's always dependent on what the opposition have, have set up their their defensive shape by. So, um, what what I suppose the primary thing is you win possession, um, you try and win it in the most favourable position uh, for you. Um, firstly, to win the ball, but then uh, from a t an attacking platform. And then you know what presents then might be a situation where if, if if the opposition have overcommitted on one side, that might present you with with something else. If they if they've now dropped uh, a lot of bodies back off uh, off a kick out, that obviously presents you with a different scenario. So um, you want to you want want players to be able to be comfortable to be able to deal with whatever scenario that that, that, that comes in front of them. Um, but but you don't want to be too straight jacketed and saying this has to happen or, or that you want them to be able to play what they see in front of them and, and maximize an opportunity if it's there as well. And um, just another one in there, what time ratios would you use um, for a session around tactical skill, skills based, small sided games, condition games, full side, or would you try to include them all in the one session or would you spread it over the week? Yeah, probably spread it out over the week. Um, I think, you know, uh, again, you know, my own experience from, from, from when I probably took over Carafin to where, where I am now has sort of led me to to a time where, where I'm, I'm certainly going back to when I was playing myself and um, the sessions were more dominated technically, certainly by half the session. Um, you know, maybe two of your two of your sessions in a week now may have a technical aspect to it. I wouldn't see that being any more than than a ten or fifteen minutes at a max uh, in, in in one or two sessions. Um, players get way more learning now. Uh, we have seen in the um, in the game based stuff, but um, they, they, as I see it, you know, they will learn. Uh, best once they understand firstly what's expected of it, and in that you know um, one of the best um, bits of advice I got going into coaching is that you know um, your best sessions will be at, can be determined by the amount of good questions you you ask, um, and what that basically is that you know when you're asking questions of players that will soon tell you what they what they understand. Um, are you hearing back what 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 what, what you want to see? Um, and that, um, I suppose, brings bring, brings your sessions to life when, when the players are engaged as much. They're able to to you know describe back what what, what it is that, that that they what you want them to see, what they should be doing, uh, what it is that they've learned. I think then you're 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 onto a winner. Yeah, just I'm going to go to the last three questions, Stephen. Okay, so how do you balance allowing players make mistakes and be and not being afraid to make mistakes? And then to improve. 
Yeah. Um, so, so the term that I used to use myself was around you've, you've got you've got positive positive errors, right? And and selfish errors. So your positive error is where somebody is trying to do the right thing, right? And you can see it uh, openly that they're trying to get the ball into space, uh, and and they and the execution, you know, just just hasn't uh, hasn't materialised. Uh, I think what you need to do there is you need to encourage that guy to continue to back self, who has to work harder, obviously, in relation to their skill execution. Um, but certainly, a team playing with with or, or, or any game, any players playing with, with an element of fear certainly won't play to their to to, to their potential. So, um, yeah, uh, guys making mistakes happens. We're all human. Um, uh, coaches make mistakes. Managers make mistakes. So players will make mistakes too. Yeah, just second last one. Uh, can you explain the V and L cups a little bit more? Right. Okay. So, so if you can think of um, you're you're a full forward, all right. So if you if you can at a point in in um, in the in the shape of an L, right. If you're standing at any point, any end point. So there's three points on an L. If I'm explaining that properly, all right. Can you make this, that shape um, in your run? So if you're standing, uh, I don't know if people can see me, can they? People can see me, yeah. Shane, yeah? Yeah, yeah they so can see you. I'll, I'll see if this works. Got above, right, right. If this is, if you can see that there, no, probably not. Right, so yeah. if, that's your, yeah. if that's your L shape and you start here, right, if you can move up, back, and to the side, or if you start here, and you move that way and then attack the ball or if you start here all right or sorry you start there go back again that's that's your end shapes and then off your v's okay again hopefully this makes it uh, under pressure to try and draw these all right again what you might be looking at here is you've got a guy here right starts here he backs off, trying to create space, and then attacks the ball there. Or he starts here, goes left, right, and comes comes back again. So that's what you're trying to say. And the big thing around movement and and, and shape there is um, you're trying to maximize the space around you. Okay. So if you're an inside player in that, you know, sometimes we're, we're you know we talk and you, you hear players you need to be constantly moving. But if you're movement ends up bringing you out to the sideline and away from the danger area that's you're only just helping the the, the defender so what you're what, what you're looking to try and do is you're trying to create spacing off your defender while still maximizing the space around you okay so without taking you away from goal right you're still trying to maintain that space close to goal but you're trying to your movement is around creating spacing so or he's right up behind you or right on the, all of a sudden in 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 a five or eight meter space you're able to create the distance so that when that pass comes in you're able to win it with your touch off your body so they can't get his hand in and that's where you get the positive play from okay last one Stephen. and um, so when working with, with a senior club side if you had 32 players would you play small side of games with mixed abilities or just split them into 8v8 so potential starters versus the 8v8 for the possible reserve players or do you keep them all mixed um typically early season i'd i'd, I'd mix them up um and I, you look i'd be trying to encourage uh, everybody i again in relation to um those skills i i, I strongly believe that you can get everybody up to up to a level i think what, what typically fails guys getting up there is that they can't get up to a, a, a sort of conditioned level to be able to execute those skills when they're fatigued or when they're under a bit of pressure. Um, so um, certainly early season, I would be looking to to, to encourage everybody. Um, as you, yeah, look, I suppose the, the, the reality is that when, when you get closer to um, you know your championship games and that you, you may need to refine your your, your group into um, 
you know, into, in, into closer to the to the guys that maybe will be starting, but also those that will be making an impact. And you know, everybody in the group will benefit certainly from having more guys of an equal uh, quality. But what you need to make sure is that that quality is on the rise, and that you don't allow people to bring the quality back down. So it is there, there is a balance in acting out, but certainly early, um, I would I, I would be trying to integrate. The, 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 the two qualities in there and try and lift uh, people up um, and you know those, those early technical drills that, that, that I that, that I stepped through with they're 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 good um, uh, skill drills to be able to get guys up to a good fitness point um, not, not on their own you you have other work to do but they, they can provide um, some good um, uh, fitness work as well as um, the, the people to appreciate what part of the skill, basic skills that you're trying to work on as well. Okay, thanks very much, Stephen. Um, I know we got through a good lot of questions, and it was a good few we didn't just get to. Um, but Stephen, thanks very much on behalf of everyone in Laird here, and I know we had a lot of people logged in from outside even the county. I think we we're still over about 250 participants um, logged in, so the engagement the whole way through was excellent. I think we had 370 logged in at one stage. So. What we're going to do, um, anyone that's logged in, we will record, uh, got to put the recording up on YouTube. Um, I'm sure Stephen has no issue with us emailing out his uh, slides um, no, to, everyone that's that is ever, to everyone that's logged in. And finally, just like to thank um, thank Stephen and last week, Colm, excellent uh, presentations. And for everyone to stay tuned over the next couple of weeks, we have a couple more um, things organised. Um, I know we have a conditioning workshop Wednesday week with Kieran Sloan, and then we're going to have also a uh, a child and youth um, session organised as well um, through, through our webinars. Obviously, everyone stay safe over the next couple of weeks. Um, and thanks very much, Stephen, and to everyone for logging in. Thanks very much. Thanks, Shane.